This tune is Chet's arrangement of the famous Elvis Presley hit from, I think, 1955, Mystery Train. And um, in a way, you could say that Chet was influential to the sound of this tune and maybe even in influential to the way that uh, this tune evolved as a hit song because uh, it was one of the earliest examples uh, outside of Les Paul, I guess Les Paul was the earliest example of using uh, echo delay in getting a guitar sound. So what I've got on my guitar right now is um, an echo repeat. It's just one repeat and it's uh, timed so that when I play the rhythm of the song it creates a backbeat. I'm going to turn it off. I can put my foot down here and click this unit and make the, the echo go away. And the, the uh, rhythm of Mystery Train goes. When I add the echo that's timed exactly at the right time, I get a backbeat. Like that. And it's kind of like, um, sort of like a 16th notes that a drummer would play, or it, it's, it's like a rhythm that a drummer would play along with the band. So it, uh, to me, it adds to the tune as long as it, and you have to work when you're working with an echo delay, uh, and they're very common to, to find such a unit, a, a pedal that you could find at the music store is very common. And uh, the whole trick of echo delay is to, to get the echo timed at the right time and to get the amount of repeats set correctly, which uh, sometimes they call that feedback. Uh, on this unit, it's labeled that, that, that uh, knob is labeled feedback, uh, how many times the echo repeats after it happens the first time. And then how much of the echo sound is uh, added back into your guitar sound, and it's, all of those things are variable. And it's really the only three variables that you have to worry about when you're working with echo. So this is timed. And I'm not going to tell you how long the time is, how many fractions of a second or anything like that, because what's important is that you time it to get the feel that you want along with the speed that you're playing a tune. So uh, I set this up in advance and I just kind of played around with it until I had it like I wanted it and it makes the backbeat. So the way that Chet was in some way involved in the um, creation of that hit tune for Elvis was that Chet had acquired uh, an amplifier at the time made by a guy named Ray Butts. And Ray Butts amplifier was different than every guitar amplifier that had been made before because it had a tape echo, uh, tape loop echo delay unit built into the amplifier. It was called the Ray Butts Echo Sonic Amplifier. And uh, a few people, when they heard Chet's sound that he got on his uh, signature original tunes, that, that are like, for instance, Mr. Sandman, uh, Caravan, that he did in those days, uh, when uh, some guitar players heard the sound, they wanted to make the sound just like that, so they had to get Ray Butts' amplifier. And uh, he didn't really make very many in his lifetime, but he, the ones that he made really made an impact. And one of the guitar players who bought a Ray Butts amplifier was Scotty Moore, Elvis's guitar player. And when, uh, when he played that sound on uh, several of Elvis's um, tunes of that era, it really added so much to the tune that if you ask me, I think it's part of what made it a hit song. So Mystery Train was one of those tunes. Now, for the purpose of explaining the tune, I think the echo is going to kind of get in the way because I'm not going to play things in time all the time. I just want to show you that, you know, what's happening with it. Without it. Like so. So for the rest of the time to explain the tune, I'll turn the echo off because it would just kind of, uh, I think, uh, get in our way more than it would help us. So here's what's going on in the tune. First of all, the signature sound of this tune is the original Scotty Moore movement that he used uh, behind Elvis in, in the original hit, and it was like this. <laughs> to me, it's a simple little movement, but it's worth practicing over and over and over and over again until you get it to where it really grooves, to where it really works. So it's an E7 chord. And then you're going to take this uh, third finger and make an A out of it. So you're shifting between E7 and A is all you're doing, but it's the way that you do it that makes it sound like it sounds. 
So you're, sli you're, you're hammering into that note on the third string, this note. So. Like that. And when I play the A chord, I'm using three fingers on my right hand to play three notes. Like that. And uh, some people don't use three fingers. You could use two if you wanted, but it, it'll sound, I think, more like the sound if you use three. I mean, how many times are you willing to practice this? The more times you play it, the better it will get, I promise. So, the idea behind playing this as a guitar solo piece is that you got to make the melody happen and play that little backbeat thing, that little figure that keeps being played over and over again. You have to make both of those things happen. The way Chet decided to do it when he recorded this, and by the way, uh, you would think that Chet might have recorded this if Elvis had it as a hit in 1955. You would think that by 1956, Chet would have recorded it, but he didn't. He waited until 1972 uh, on an album with Jerry Reed. I think it was the album Me and Jerry.